Okay. So, uh, like usual, we will do a short meditation. Um, so please sit comfortably. Uh, if, if possible, sit in the lotus position, cross-legged, and with your back straight. And uh, in order to get a uh, hand, uh, in order to, in, o in order to uh, become familiar with the breathing process, you can put your right hand or maybe your left hand on your belly. Put your right right hand on your belly, and then as you breathe in, feel uh, the stomach uh, growing, and as you breathe out. Feel the stomach flattening out. So we will breathe in three times. Breathe in uh, for three counts, then hold for one count, and then breathe out for three counts. Let's be aware that you are breathing in for one, two, three. Be aware that you are holding your breath for one count. And also be aware that you are breathing out for three counts. Okay. One, two, three, in. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, one, two, three, one, two, three, in, one, one, two, three, out, one, two, three, in, one, one, two, three, out, one, two, three, in, one, one, two, three, out, one, two, three, in, one, one, two, three, out. In order to help you breathe properly, <coughs> put right your right hand on your belly. Then as you breathe in, feel the stomach building up and as you breathe out, feel the stomach flattening out. Just forget everything else, whatever happened in the past, it's not here, it's gone. Whatever is going to come has not come yet. The only moment that you have within you is the present moment and in this present moment we will delve into. Okay, three more times. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. As you become aware of your breathing in and breathing out, also feel your body, any uneasiness in your body, any comfort or discomfort in your body, maybe in your back, you have a backache, feel it, observe it, in your body, as you as you feel your body, observe your body, and as you feel and observe your body, you are able to uh, feel and observe your body. Now let's try to feel uh, and observe your emotions, positive or negative, or negative, whatever emotions that you are, whatever emotions that you are, whatever emotions whatever emotions are. Emotions are. Just watch them. Watch us observe them. Emotions 
emotions such as guilt, emotions such as jealousy, emotions such as kindness, emotions such as um, hatred, if there are some, just observe them. Maybe we, we may not have uh, an actual hatred or hatredness, but many of us do have bitterness. So we are bitter uh, about someone doing something to us, or whether it's real or whether it's imagined. We are bitter about something. So we'll be aware, be conscious about that bitterness. Maybe not. you're not even bitter, but you are just uneasy. There is some discomfort, there is some discord uh, between you and uh, someone else. Maybe it's your colleague, maybe it's your friend, maybe it's your partner. There is some discord. Hmm. There is some uneasiness going on. Whatever it is, if, the, if, if that emotion arises, watch it observe it when you observe your body and your body and there is a strong discomfort then you can adjust your body your back put some i cannot hear anything ah okay so when you observe your body strong discomfort um, and you can adjust it. Maybe you feel like uh, there's a, uh, your sitting is not comfortable, or maybe your um, posture is not correct. Then you can adjust those posture and sitting. Mm, that's that's how we deal with bodily or physical discomfort, or physical uh, misalignment. Uh, now, when you observe your mind when you go to within and observe your emotions and you find discomfort and discord within um, within you and your emotions uh, first you have to observe them uh, within a single day within a single hour there will be thousands of different emotions that will pop up so you need to look at which emotion uh, sort of pops up the most, which is the most frequent uh, arising or popping emotion within yourself. So if you observe carefully, you will know which emotion uh, pops up the most within yourself. <clears throat> while observing, uh, while observing the coming and going of different emotions. Uh, from a tiny corner of your mind, you can assign uh, a tiny corner of your mind um, to count the number of emotions that arises. Okay, uh, bitterness came three times in one minute. Um, anger came two times. Um, jealousy came four times. Like that, you can keep a tap on your emotions going and coming. Tap on all your emotions, record the movement of your emotions, install a system within yourself on your emotions. Okay, so this is the task for today. Um, next time, next, next, next meeting, uh, sorry, next session, we will watch over uh, the CC camera footage and then see who's the culprit, who's coming most, who's going most, who's doing the, you know, crime. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so today we will, uh, now we will continue. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we will continue with the teaching. Um, so, we're going through, oh, okay. Uh, we're going through the uh, words of my perfect master by Pedro Mache. Okay. In the chapter we're going, we're covering the general chapter is suffering of some suffering, and of that that particular um, of that particular 
subject there are three there are three um the, uh, sorry there are two the lower ramps and the higher ramps so we covered the three lower ramps of animal hungry ghost and hell and now we are covering the uh today we will start from the higher even with the uh, human beings um rinpochela um i'm wonders uh, i'm wondering that we um, uh, we missed the point uh so give me the petals who move through the space is a point to a by 2.2 okay that's so that's that 75 all right uh, i think right. that uh, i don't okay I'm, i'm not sure but uh, i i i feel that yeah this, okay 2.2 right 2.2 just right 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 yeah perhaps you are right perhaps you are right yeah okay all right yeah oh yeah Uh yeah I think I left that one yes. Okay, shall I continue? Uh yes if you can um it's okay. a little bit about this. Okay. Okay. So there are two types of uh pratas, uh the pratas that uh the um Okay. So what we are going to cover now is the the pratas who move through space. Uh the pratas who uh um live among themselves uh and then there are the pratas who move through the space so these are in tibetan we call them uh the zen the gelbo the shinde jumbo mamo terang and so on and so forth um so in tibetan uh anyway okay so these are uh the name of the different types of uh pratas and the what what happens is uh, usually when people uh i think i covered that last uh, i i i i covered that couple couple of weeks before that uh, most of the spirit most of the spirit the so called ghost and uh, all the spirit most of the spirit belongs not to the human realm not to the god realm not to the animal realm but to the um pratas the uh uh the hungry ghost realm uh, even though they may be spirit some some of them uh work under dharma protectors and so on and so forth but they still belong to the realm of the so um the hungry ghost hmm. so for example like zen and gelpo and shinde like uh, zen is a very in, in in popular tibetan culture zen are usually uh, people uh, heroic people like warriors who die during the war and uh, because they die with a very strong sort of a um uh hatred when 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 you die in that when you die in the war especially as a as a very powerful warrior when you die in the war um obviously you are being killed by someone and you as a very brave warrior there is you know you have a very strong uh, urge to live and not to die but to kill to wipe out the enemy and so on and so forth so at that moment when you are dying you have a very strong sense of uh um um revenge and uh, as you die so there is a very strong sense of uh, uh sense of revenge revenge means you know you want to avenge something so there is that hunger revenge is a form of hunger even though it may not be a, a hunger of physically uh, physical thing but it is a hunger it is more of a um, uh hunger of fulfillment uh, that uh, it is imperative that the person who is dying is able to or some of his uh uh um successors be able to finish out or wipe out the other clan um so there is that hunger there when they die with such a hunger and they are so aggressive uh at the moment of their death so zen the word zen in tibetan usually means aggressiveness uh and uh so, um, so also it can be uh directly connected to the english word of brute uh, brutal brutality brute brute force like that um so therefore um most many many a large number of spirits belong to the uh zen family 
or the ten ten group of uh, hungry ghosts. So they are spirits. They are powerful spirits because they were uh, um, very powerful warriors in their past lives, and because of their strong uh, sense of uh, revengeness. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, at the time of death, they they die a very powerful death. There, it's it's a very, um, mm, it's it's both powerful and uh, very emotional death. Uh, but when they die, um, if due to the uh, um, due to due to the maturation of their karma at the time of death. Um, many a times they are born in not in the uh, uh, animal or not in the hell realm but in the hungry ghost realm so to continue because there is that strong sense of uh, uh, hunger there to avenge the death of other people so because of that hunger that hunger which is none other than attachment hunger is at the end of the day hunger is attachment uh, so that strong uh, sense of hunger, that strong sense of attachment actually uh, sort of catapults them to the life not of an animal or a hell being to suffer there because they haven't given up, right? Uh, when you give up everything, then you go to the lowest realm. But since you have a very strong urge to live and avenge death of somebody else, so it's a very tricky thing. At one point, you did a, you know, you commit a lot of, uh, uh, horrendous acts uh, but at the same time at the time of death uh, you are you have that strong sense of uh, revenge which is none other than attachment revenge is a form of attachment because you really really wanted to uh, avenge the death of you know uh, your family or whatever so because of that it catapults the person uh, the, the dying warrior into the realm of the hungry ghost so they remain hungry not being able to uh, fulfill their dreams for eons and eons. So that's why they are born in the uh, the, the the realm of the Zen. And the Gelbo Gelbo in Tibetan usually means king. And these are uh, again powerful people. It's like they can be kings, they can be actual kings, and they can in today's time they can be like politicians, very powerful people, and uh, you know unable to fulfill uh, their goal whether it's a good goal or a bad goal. Um, when they die, they die in the realm of uh, uh, the hungry ghost. So when we say powerful people, they can be politicians, they can be uh, very uh, unscrupulous, uh, rich people, uh, um, and they can be people who hold a very uh, powerful positions and so on and so forth. So these are just a few of the examples. Huh? Okay. Uh, these are the ten Gelbo, Shinji, Jiao, Jungbo, Nam, Mamu, Tera, and so on, all of whom live out their lives in constant terror and hallucination, thinking of nothing but evil. So I explained earlier, right? They have a strong uh, urge to avenge death and to, you know, if you if you are a warrior, if you die in the war, then you want to kill the enemy, so you die with such a strong urge to such a strong urge, such a strong attachment to end other people's life. If you die as a very powerful, unscrupulous, powerful uh, people, uh, then you have a very strong uh, sense of uh, the urge and attachment to maybe to uh, you know set your names right, set your records right, to get rid of the other the opponent and so on and so forth. So because of such a um, evil if you like uh, such a strong negative thought um, destructive thought at the time of death uh, happens to um, be sold on their mental stream at the time of the death which is a very uh, uh, important um, aspect of one's uh, lifetime at the time of death so when that happens uh, it, 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 it it leaves a very strong impact on your mental stream and that serves as the and uh, you know um, precursor for 
you to have an evil thought your almost your whole life in the next birth because when you when you die with a, such a destructive when you die with such a destructive negative thought you also uh, the destruct, destructive thought it's so strong at the time of death then when you uh, were born uh, uh, the the, re the remnants of that such a negative thoughts are still there at the time of birth for example when you live uh, you know for example when you sleep with a very negative emotion very negative thought maybe you are maybe you are very very sad you know not just like just uh, ordinarily or average kind of sadness but very sad and then you sleep or maybe you sleep with a very worrying thought uh, maybe you sleep with a very negative thought that you want to put harm on somebody and something like that and uh, when you wake up in the morning the remnants of that thought will still be there uh, there will be the residue of that thought will still it will be still imprinted etched on your mental stream you know this is an, a very uh, simple example uh, so what happens uh, when you when you when, when you sleep usually you sleep for two three four five six hours but when you die and reborn it doesn't take that much the moment you die you are also reborn uh, you die from one life to be born in another life so dying and uh, being born is like going through one door so when you when you exit one door you actually enter another uh, another door like an, another 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 portal uh, when you when you were exit, exiting from one portal, you were actually entering into another portal. Um, so similarly, when you are dying from one life, it means you are exiting from one aspect of life. But it doesn't mean your life has come to a total end. Actually, you are entering into another form of life. Uh, so therefore, the moment you die, you are also born in somewhere else. The moment you exit from this place, you are also entering into another place. Uh, so. Death and born, death and birth, are actually quicker than sleeping and awakening. Uh, so, so, so the imprints are much more stronger. You know, so when you when when you go when you go with a warring heart, uh, when you sleep with a warring heart, and you wake up in the morning, you still have a heavy heart, uh, heaviness in your heart, in your chest in the morning. So. The, if such a thing remains, such a heaviness and such impact remains after five, six hours, then imagine what would be the uh, repercussions um, if if you enter and exit and enter into another world, another realm, just with, within a few seconds, within a few milliseconds. So the residue, the impact of the negative thought of your previous life was so strong. If you die with uh, avenging thought if you die with the uh, hunger very strong hunger you know hunger and avenge uh, revenge they are all, all part of they are, they are all part of uh, attachment so you die with a very strong attachment so that attachment lingers on in your next life and you are hungry whether mentally or physically you are hungry your whole life your next life hmm. uh, they fall into even lower realms such as the hell as soon as they die right so the whole life their previous life they want they, they kill a lot of people they have done a lot of harms and then when they die they die with the um they die with the undying wish to avenge something to uh fulfill something with a very strong urge very strong attachment and uh, when they are born in another life such as the pretas that undying wish is still uh, lingering on and that kept them going on going onwards to do something destructive uh, no, whether they can do it or not whether they can actually fulfill that destructive thought is another matter but they go with such a thought and as they keep going on with such a thought um, they uh, accrue uh, more negative karma to be born in a lower realm than that of the hungry ghost and so they uh, at the time of death at the time of the at the time of the death as a hungry ghost most of the time you are born in lower realm such as the hell realm okay
what they want to do is to offload their pain on others. Okay, we, so I just basically said that. Um, but they still fail to do themselves any good by it, even when they happily visit their former friends. And yeah, so even when they happily visit their former friends and loved ones, they only bring them sickness, insanity, and other unwelcome suffering. <clears throat> so this is like, uh, uh, so, so the intention may be good that you wanted to help your family term right not in we don't have to go so far as to the uh, preta the the hungry ghost ram like for example in this lifetime in 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 a human life lifetime uh, in order to help your family in order to uh, help your friends if you go steal some uh, steal if you steal from someone if you uh, kill someone in order to help your family of course uh, you will still uh, end up in the jail if you, if you are caught, uh, and then uh, your family will, the name of your family will also be dragged, and so on and so forth. So the same thing, the, the same rule applies here as well. So as, as the hungry ghost goes to help people, um, then it instead of helping the, the their negative sort of vibe is so strong that instead of helping the people who they meant to help, they actually end up harming the very people whom they are trying to help uh, for example if you if you are burning if your if your whole body is burning and then in order and and maybe your um, in, in order to uh, in order to hug and in order to uh, carry your child if you go there and touch your child if you go there and try to caress your child uh, caress your wife, kiss your wife, or try to hug them, uh, because your whole body is burning. It will burn them as well. So, or, or maybe we can uh, give the same, <clears throat> use the same analogy with uh, if your body is stained in uh, crap, if your body is, sta is uh, stained with stench, is, 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 has a very strong stench, then if you touch somebody. Uh, if you try to, if you try to hug somebody that person even if you touch and hug that person with a good intention your stench your smell will be there and that will actually uh, remain with that person for a long time so similarly um, instead of even though the intention may be good but it will end up helping the uh, harming the very person that they meant to help uh, and moreover the predators undergo continual torture one from their own sort of uh, one is more of a uh, automated sort of uh, negative karma which is uh, automated sort of consequence which is because they did so many so much of a negative uh, harm to other people in their previous life so uh, as a byproduct of that negative karma they are meant to go through so much suffering on their own on top of that other people come to uh, make them suffer as well, such as powerful magicians and tantric, uh, you know, the, the tantricas. Tantricas are people who actually practice tantrics. So they are not. Uh, so these are you know, not necessarily like tantric practitioners. Normally, when we say Vajrayana practitioners, so there's a difference between Vajrayana practice and tantric practice. So tantric practice actually uh, crosses over both Hinduism and Buddhism. So Vajra, when we talk about Vajrayana Buddhism, we are talking about when we talk about Vajrayana, we are talking about Buddhist Buddhism specifically. So people who deal in tantric practices are called tantrikas in Hindi, uh, in, in Sanskrit. That means people who practice tantric. Uh, so just because you uh, practice tantric does not mean that you are a spiritual practitioner per se. So if you know black magic, if you practice black magic, then you are a tantrika. You are a tantric uh, practitioner to a certain degree. So powerful magicians here refers to uh, powerful tantrikas, uh, people who uh, deal with black magic and magic, uh, you know, uh, tantric. Um, uh, esoteric practices and tantric rituals and so on and so forth so they will because when you harm somebody that person will also when they find out that it is from uh, spirit and from the 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 other world then they will also have, seek help from powerful magicians uh, tantricas black magicians 
and then they will burn the burn them and perform rituals in which they cast all sort of imaginary weapons to them to them meaning the uh, the predators and uh, they will also be locked under the earth in the darkness for kalpas for eons uh, burn them to uh, fire pound them with mustard seeds so on and so forth so so there are twofold suffering right one is an automatic suffering um, self-inflicted suffering you might call it it comes as the byproduct of the uh, consequence of your negative actions in your previous life it's a self-inflicted suffering it's an automatic suffering uh, then the other form of suffering comes uh, it's not automated it's not from it's not self-inflicted but it's inflicted by other people towards on uh, to you because of your because you were harming other people so other people actually harm you back uh, so the, the suffering is twofold so uh, powerful magicians will pound them with mustard seeds powdered stones and like they split their heads into a hundred pieces and bodies into a thousand fragments like all predators they too have distorted perceptions uh, in winter the sun feels cold to them in summer the moon burns uh, some take the form of a bird, a dog, or other animal, hideous to look upon. Look, look upon. In short, the predator's sufferings are inconceivable. Hmm. Okay, so do we have any questions? No questions so far, Regina. Oh, um, I'm sorry. There is a question um, from. Um, prostrate to Lumichilla, is it not, uh, I'm sorry, hold on, uh, is it not easy to take on suffering of lower realm and cultivate love and compassion for them? And even sometimes for the person who don't have any religious belief, uh, will you please give us uh, some advice or technique to practice in order to improve this? Thank you, Lumichilla. Yeah. Uh, so, from my understanding, uh, the question re relates to uh, the fact that it's not easy to check on the suffering of the lower realms and cult cultivate uh, loving and ki loving, com loving kindness and compassion towards them. Uh, and sometimes the person uh, may not want to, you know, if, if, the, if, the, if that person is not a religious person, then how can uh, you know, such practices help them, right? I think that's a question. Uh, so, uh, the first part, of course, it's not easy to check on the sufferings of lower M and cultivate love. Uh, it's not easy, of course. Um, to take on any suffering is not easy. You know, we all have sufferings of our own, and to take on sufferings of other people, it's never easy. It's a, of, of course, it's a, it's a difficult. Thing to do and that, that's why it's a you know uh, a practice is not for everybody um, practices in general are not for everybody and especially this kind of practice is called um, the taking and giving suffering uh, sorry the practice of taking and giving so you take the suffering of other people onto yourself and you give your uh, joyfulness happiness to them and uh, in order to do that you have to be very strong-willed. Uh, you have to have a strong heart. It's not for the weak-hearted. In order to take their take take their pain, uh, take their suffering. Um, so, but still, everything comes with practice. Uh, it basically boils down to uh, um, agreed that it is uh, a very difficult practice to check on the suffering of other people, but at the same time. Uh, you have to ask this question, if not me, who will? And in order to get to that question of if not me, who will, you know, you have to, it takes a long time. Of course, you have to read through, listen through, uh, lot, through a lot of contemplations, and you will find, you will, you will come to the uh, conclusion that if not me, who will do that? Um, so, uh, the very fact remains that all the sentient beings have been 
my mother, my my so the uh, my my mother has been. They were they were my mother and my parents, my loved ones, so on and so forth. Just like the people whom <clears throat> who are so in, endearing to me in this lifetime, uh, all the people suffering in the lower realm have also been uh, such an endearing person people to me in other lifetimes. That is one way of looking at it. Uh, actually, this will come when we cover the... We will go into more detail about this, <clears throat> taking the suffering of other people when we talk about the bodhicitta, which will come much later. <clears throat> First, we are talking about the sufferings of samsara and so on and so forth. But later, we, there will be a... So, after talking about all the problems, uh, like a doctor, like a good doctor diagnosing the patient, after talking about all the problems, then we will have the solutions ready uh, in the chapter in, in in the upcoming chapters so we will go into more detail when we cover those things basically <clears throat> uh, we have to do that because if not me who will so you have to take the responsibility in your own hand in, in order to get in order to get such a responsible responsible mindset uh, it takes you know to, to become a responsible person you have to be mature enough so in order to be mature enough, you need to study, you need to accumulate merit, you need to purify negativities and so all that. And when you do all of that, those things, when you come through a lot of experiences, when you gain a lot of experiences, then you become mature enough. And then as you become more and more mature, you will take more and more responsibilities. So, uh, and uh, even though the responsibilities may be difficult, you have this mindset of, if not me, who will? You know, if I do not do it, then who will do it? That sort of mindset will creep in, uh, just like that. It it comes as a byproduct of your maturity. So you have to be spiritually mature enough to be able to take on the sufferings of your loved ones, uh, the, the people suffering in the lower realms, and so on and so forth. Okay, that that is the first step of the uh, part of the question. Uh, and the uh, second part is. To those people who don't have religious belief, uh, what, like, how is it going to help them? <clears throat> so, to understand that thing, uh, you have to understand the fact that Buddha doesn't care. Buddha, Buddha uh, does not care. Actually, uh, karma doesn't care whether you are a believer or not. If you do negative karma, you will have to reap your negative uh, cause and conditions, uh, negative results, negative consequences. If you do good things, if you your whole life you don't believe in any religious thing, if you keep doing all the right things, if you help people, if you have a good heart, um, always be, become a responsible citizen and do a good thing, if you don't do even one bit of uh, dharma, one bit of religious practice, you will still have a, a good uh, you will still accrue, you will still at, uh, accumulate a uh, lot of positive karma, a lot of positive karma, and it will have you, it, 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 it can uh, catapult you to have a better life in your next life. Uh, so the only difference between a Dharma practice and non-Dharma practice is that if you do a Dharma practice, then all the positive deeds that you have done will actually uh, enable you to have a life that is uh, a life that is actually that, that will actually lead you to nirvana out of samsara without religious without dharma practice without dharma practice uh, whatever positive deed you do it will have positive result that's for sure but it may not necessarily lead you to nirvana so if you want to have uh, so the uh, so so there are two things right let's say you are in a prison so there are two options one is to uh, get the next 24 hours very uh, a, a very relaxed time in the prison good food all the entertainments so you have done a okay let's see let let's do this you are in a prison you end up in a prison and then you are you are you are told by the warden the prison warden to perform certain task. If you perform this and this and this task, then there will be some reward. So you did all the uh, the things that the warden asked you to do. So what happens is there are two choices. Uh, one, 
there are two type of two, two sets of tasks one set of tasks will actually give you let's say one month of uh, relaxed time in the prison um, a lot of freedom uh, maybe uh, and a lot of good food and all the entertainment and everything but at the end of the month after one month you will you will have to go back to the rigorous imprisonment like you usually do and another thing is you will have to go through your normal routine it will be rigorous because of your positive date because of the task that you performed for the warden uh, you have to still go through the rigorous imprisonment but your um, sentence in the prison is shortened maybe you will have to still go through all the uh, rigorous imprisonment but after maybe two years you will be uh, totally out of the prison so there are two types right similarly if you practice with the if you if you are a dharma practitioner if you practice dharma if you imbibe your dharma practices and uh, dharma mindset into your everyday the good culture of your everyday life in doing in helping other in doing all, all the positive things if you imbibe the dharma practice into them then this will actually uh, help you it, you may not necessarily have a good life next in, in uh, good rebirth in your next life mm -hmm. you may not necessarily have that's a very different there are many various there are various reasons for that but uh, whatever actions you have committed today will actually catapult you outside will actually make you uh, gain freedom from the prison life imprisonment of samsara okay if you practice without any religious if, if you do any good things if you help others without any religious uh, or any i'm going to use the word spiritual and dharma uh, any dharma belief in the dharma any spiritual belief any religious belief uh, then uh, you can have a very good life in in your next rebirth but after that rebirth is done for then all your positive karmas have been exhausted then there is only one way to go which is down downwards uh, so yeah so i think your question uh, actually is about whether you, it will help the people who have no religious belief or not so it doesn't uh, whether you whether whether the person actually practices or believe Buddh, uh, the buddhism or any religion or not is not the problem no, not the thing here the, pro, the thing is whether he, the person has done the right thing or not if the person has done a wrong thing doesn't matter whether just like myself i'm a monk if i do all the wrong things as a monk as a rinpoche as a tupu whatever I'm, I have to bear. I have to bear all the consequences of my negative karma. There's no way out for that. Uh, but if you are, if you do all the all the good things, if you do all the proper things, if you do, if you accumulate merit, uh, if you purify your negativities, if you do all the good things, even if you are not a believer, if you don't believe in dharma at all, you will still have a good life. Okay. More questions. Yeah. We have a one more question, Michela. Um, there's two parts. The first part of the question is the uh, uh, Rimbuchela, the soldiers who sacrificed themselves in the wars yeah. to protect our country. What are yeah. they called? Um, that's what the first. What? What, are, what do we call them? What are hmm. the names? Are they are they called Sen? Um, so that is the first part. But the second part of the question is, uh, what can we do to liberate them from their demonic state? Thank you, Rumichela. So the first part is, uh, what is the name for the soldiers who sacrificed themselves to protect us? In but terms of, uh, in terms of uh, hungry ghosts, you mean, right? Right. What is the name we would call these soldiers? Yeah. Thank you, Rumichi. Oh yeah. So there's this thing to uh, glorify all the uh, members of the military, right? Uh, especially when it comes to the uh, the army, the defense sector. So we, like, no matter where which country you go, uh, they all glorify the military. Uh, but there's a saying: um, a, a hero, a hero from one country is actually a um, traitor from another, for another country. 
It's a so when you are doing something good for one country and uh, fight and die for that, actually you are harming another country. So when you look from one point of view, from your own con country's point of view, of course that 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 that, that army man, that uh, military person, is actually doing a lot of good thing. For, uh, because actually, actually it's uh, helping with the country's defense. But when doing so, uh, there are actually many a times, if it's a very powerful country, it's actually impeding on the <clears throat> uh, freedoms and uh, you know the rights of other countries. So anyway, uh, the point is, uh, however glorified uh, they are, no matter how 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 much we glorify the, uh, the the military people, at the end of the day, uh, they are committing crime by killing people. They are committing maybe not a cr crime is in the land of the law. Because uh, according to the land of the law, they can kill people, right? But according to the law of causality, law of karma, by killing people, by act by by engaging in act of uh, killing, uh, they are committing crimes, uh, not uh, constitutional crimes, but uh, crime of the nature, hmm? natural crime. So it's, it may not be a constitutional crime, but it's a natural crime. Uh, to kill people, to engage in killing people, to to engage in shortening lives of people, and so on and so forth. So, uh, because of that, uh, as a military people, when they engage in uh, military combat, and then either end up killing others, or end up, while engaging in the military uh, violence, uh, when they pass, they actually uh, uh, accumulate a huge amount of negative karma. This is not criminal uh, by the land of the law, not constitutionally criminal, but naturally criminal because it's against the law of the nature. Um, so therefore, they will be born in the lower realms. And the lower realm, uh, I, I think I already mentioned in the very beginning, this is, they called that Zen or the, the brute. Mm -hmm. uh, Zen or <clears throat> then can be translated as brute, it can be translated as aggressive. So the people who are born in the realm, uh, people who die in war, people who die in clashes, fights, violence, and born in the spirit realm, in the hungry ghost realm, they are, they will be born in as a, as a zen, zen, that is the, like uh, literally translated as brutes. B R U T E S, Bruce. I think the second portion is uh, what can we do? What is the remedy for them? Uh, like, how can we free them from samsara, uh, from from their suffering? Right. So, okay. Uh, one thing for sure: even Buddha cannot free them. Right. Uh, liberation lies in your own hands. Nirvana lies in your own hands. You have to come out of it yourself. This is the first truth. Uh, so if anyone promises you nirvana, if anyone anyone promises you liberation, they're just, uh, you know, um, they're, they're being a charlatan. So no one can free you except yourself. This is the very truth of Buddhism. First, you have to know this thing. Uh, uh, on top of that, so what you can do to assist them, to support them, in to 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 uh, for them to alleviate their suffering, uh, to make their lives a little bit easier. So there are certain things. First thing was last few weeks ago I told you the mantra to uh, transform food <clears throat> for the uh, for the for the predators. Remember that. So it is not about finding or not finding food. It is about whether they are able to consume their food or not. Even in, so when we uh, recite the mantras and blow on that, on those objects, then it becomes a consumable food for the predators. You know, even in, uh, even in a worldly term, even in this world, there are so many food available in the market. 
but not all the food that is available in the market are okay for you. For some people, spicy food are not okay. Some for some people, sweets are not okay. So on and so forth. Some for some people, oily food are not okay. For some people, they need a lot of fat. Mm. So for some people, uh, they uh, they cannot take uh, um, what is the word for that? Glut gluten gluten. Mm. Some people need cannot take gluten, so on and so forth. Some people cannot take, most of Asians actually, 70 or 80% of Asians are, uh, um, uh, what is the word again? I forgot. Allergic? Like, allergic to, uh, like, they're lactose in intolerant, right? We lactose are intolerant. Lactose intolerant. So we have to boil the milk to, in order to drink them. Uh, and, uh, and and many of us actually have to drink lactose free milk so just because it's there it's available there does not mean you can actually consume them uh, so when we chant the mantras okay on the food then it become consumable for them they can actually eat them they can actually consume them once that prata eats takes the uh, consume, uh, takes the food from you, when, once that Prata is able to take your excret, ex, uh, your waste, your urine and your stool, which has been transmuted, actually the, the actual word for it is transmutation, transmutation, it's been mutated to something cons consumable. And when they take the food, which is actually your waste, when they take the food, there is a very strong connection between you and the Prata. You give their food to them, they are able to uh, quench their thirst, appease their hunger. So there is a very strong karma between the person, uh, the, the Prata who is able to eat the food from your hand. When that strong karma is uh, um, established, when that Karma, that, that when that strong karmic connection has been established, then when you chant other mantras, other sutras to the pratas, to the hungry ghost, it would be very, very impactful, very impactful. So now what you have to do, after giving the food, now what you have to do, there is a, a stanza in the um, entering the middle way, uh, it's in the prayer, uh, first I give uh, material things first I, I give first I practice the generosity of giving material things and then later I will uh, participate in the uh, generosity of giving the Dharma so after giving your material things which is the food very strong karmic connection has been established between you and the hungry ghost. And now you can <clears throat> recite more mantras, chant the Buddha's name, Amitabha Buddha's name, uh, and Om Mani Padme Hum, and other mantras. And uh, gradually they become uh, uh, what we call an imprint, a positive imprint is laid after that. Now the third stage, what you have to do is, if you know Buddha Dharma, then uh, by dedicating the food to them, uh, visualizing the pratas in the vicinity, in close to you, then teach them Dharma, teach them about law of causality. When I say Dharma, don't you don't have to go to like you know uh, high yoga, highest yoga tantra and so on like that. It's too high for them. Maybe it's too high for myself also. Um, so what you have to tell them is tell them law of causality, karma, law of karma. Teach them. One time, two time, three time. They cannot learn in one or two time, right? Even in the you have to study in the school for 16, 17 years. Uh, you have to spend all your teenage years in the school. So it will take time for the Pratas to learn the Dharma and once they learn the Dharma they will be familiarized in the law of causality and then they will they, 
a certain understanding will dawn upon the pretas that they should abstain from negative karma. It is the negative karma that actually brought them to this life lifestyle. And then they will try to repent. And the change will come from within. And when the change comes from the within, the transfer, transformation comes from the without. When change comes from within, the transfer, when there is an internal change, then there will be an external transformation, meaning they will be able to escape from the negative, uh, from the pratas, the life of the pratas. Okay. So when it, when, when you, when you look at the gradual steps, then you will understand how practicing the dharma, spiritual practices, how reading the text with the pratas will help. Otherwise, if you just re directly read the text to them, they won't understand anything. For example, if somebody is hungry, somebody's limbs are cut off, somebody's legs and uh, somebody's legs are cut off. They come from an accident, right? Somebody has a car accident, legs are cut off. You tell, teach them Dharma, no help. Because they are most, the, uh, the most grievous uh, incident that they can think of is the pain in their legs, nothing else. So first you have to take that person to the hospital, treat them. If they are hungry, give them food. If their limbs are cut off, if they are in a terrible accident, take them to the hospital, treat them. When they recover, gradually you can tell them the truth. Okay, who, you know, who was, the, uh, you can tell them about who actually, you know, uh, crushed you and so on and so forth. So uh, the, gradually you tell them the truth of law of nature. The truth of law of causality, you tell them that. And then, uh, they will come out of it. Okay. okay. That's all the questions for tonight, Mumuji. That's all the questions? All right. Uh, hmm. I think I covered everything. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> hmm. All right. So, oh, okay. <laughs> I really passed over the oh yeah let's do the dedication please then yeah <laughs> Me. There,